Welcome everyone to Half Historical Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and the patrons over on Patreon voted for me to break down the historicity of the 2012 movie Lincoln, directed by Steven Spielberg. I realize that there is so much to cover in this movie that it will take multiple parts, at least two, possibly three, so I'll be covering those in the next few weeks. Thank you to all the patrons, and enjoy. Work, sir. Perhaps you'll hire me. Perhaps I will. But you should know, sir, that I get sick at the smell of boot black and I cannot cut hair. I've yet to find a man who could cut mine so it'd make any difference. You got spring your hair for a white man. <laughs> My last barber hanged himself. <laughs> and the one before that. Left me his scissors in his will. <laughs> Here we get to see one of Lincoln's trademark actions, storytelling. He loved to tell stories, and that is what drew a lot of people to him. One of his first jobs as a young adult was working at a country store as a clerk. People came to the store for goods, but would be entranced in one of his humorous stories. It was his likability and ability to tell jokes that won the townspeople of New Salem over to him, and led the town to choose him as the man to decide who won horse races during a close finish since he was overwhelmingly respected for his opinion and liked. He also was known for self-deprecating humor. A politician one time called him two-faced. Lincoln replied, if I had another face besides this one, he would be wearing it. This simple joke he tells to the two soldiers illustrates this long-standing characteristic of the 16th president. Too, Daddy, but we can't. Why not? Well, it's gone. It's three years now. It's gone. Some movies hint at Lincoln being human, but this film excels at making the president human. He was not just the commander in chief, but a father and a husband. In this scene, we see him caring for his son Tad. Near the end of the scene, Tad says he wants to see Willie. This is in reference to the son that Abraham and Mary lost in February. Of 1862. Willie was not the first child lost by the couple. Their son Eddie passed away at the age of four in 1850. Out of the four children they had, two had passed away, leaving them with their oldest son Robert and their youngest son Tad. The death of both Willie and Eddie put a strain on the marriage of Abraham and Mary, more so with Willie's death, because Lincoln was president and did not get to grieve properly. I love this scene for one reason. They captured how he loved to store documents in his hat. In Lincoln's early life, he was a postmaster in Illinois. The postal system back then worked differently than it does now. For the most part, a person would go to the post office to pick up their mail and pay in order to receive it. However, Lincoln would deliver mail to the locale and keep those letters in his hat. His hat was his storage device as he made the rounds. 
In this scene, I want you to pay attention to the two gentlemen sitting away from the table and on either side of Lincoln. The man on the right side of the screen is John Nicolay, and the man on the left side of the screen is John Hay. They are the private secretaries of Lincoln. Nicolay became Lincoln's secretary in his law firm in Springfield and studied law under the future president. When Lincoln got the nomination for president from the Republican Party, Lincoln hired him as a secretary for his political campaign, and when he won, kept the young man in that position. John Hay was hired on after Lincoln's nomination because Nicolay was getting overrun with work, in particular fan mail. When Lincoln won election, Nicolay requested Hay to come with them to the White House. At first, Lincoln dismissed the idea, saying that they could not bring all of Springfield with them, but would eventually relent and both secretaries worked for the president until his untimely death. In this movie, both men are depicted well, and it shows them as some of the hardest workers in Lincoln's circle, making sure tasks are done and keeping up with appointments. Just another thing, this film does very well. Don't encourage this. Don't encourage this. <laughs> the goat got me. Yeah, help me get one of these to my room. Is she in there? Here, Tad Lincoln drove a goat pulled wagon through the White House in full view of dignitaries and people hoping to see the president. This may seem odd, but after the death of Eddie, Lincoln's whole demeanor changed toward his children. He went from being distant and restrictive to being loving and carefree. Because death was an ever present figure in Lincoln's life, he wanted his children to have as much fun as possible and be children. At his law office in Springfield, Willie and Tad were known for pulling books off shelves, ripping up important documents, and causing general havoc, while Lincoln sat oblivious to the chaos. He did not want to punish the children, and this came through in this scene with Tad causing a lot of disruption and Lincoln not paying any mind with White House servants attempting to control the situation as much as possible. I prayed for death the night Willie died. My headaches are how I know I didn't get my wish. How to endure the long afternoon and deep into the night. I know. Try not to think about him. How will I manage? Somehow. Somehow. You will. Oh. Four years more in this terrible house, reproaching us. I mentioned earlier that the death of Willie strained the marriage of Abraham and Mary. Mary was devastated, and so was Abraham. But he was the president, and he had to keep up appearances. In this scene, they talk about having to put on a brave face and go on about life as normal, even though they were hurting inside. Sometimes weekly parties took place in the White House for politicians to mingle and for the president to talk policy with important men. Many times the first lady would host these parties, but after Willie's death, Mary took a hiatus from hosting, but Lincoln, being president, could not avoid these parties and instead had to host them, putting even more pressure on the grieving parent. Most guns They've on been each reinforcing it for the last two years. They've taken 17,000 shells since yesterday. I want to hear Fort is Fisher is gold. ours and Wilmington has fallen. Send another damn cable. The problem's their commander, Whiting. He engineered the fortress himself. The damn thing's his child. He'll defend it till his every last man is gone. He is not Coming out, right you old rat! <laughs> that's, what, that's what Ethan Allen called out to the commander of Fort Ticonderoga in 1776. Come on out, you old rat! Uh, of course, there are only 40-odd redcoats at Ticonderoga, but... There is one Ethan Allen story that I'm no. very partial to. No, you're, you're going to tell a story. I don't believe that I can bear to listen to another one of your stories right now. I need the B&O side yard schedule for Alexandria. I asked for them this morning. It was, I don't care. <laughs> there is so much to talk about in this scene. But first, let's talk about Lincoln's presence in the telegraph room. The president spent hours in that room, getting in reports from commanders about battles. Not one day 
of his presidency did he not think about the war and the politics surrounding it. He engulfed himself in the war. We also see John Nicolay seated next to the president as he tells another story. Another moment in this scene is one that I have never seen before in a movie. There may very well be one, but I have not seen it. A Civil War battle from the perspective of the president and his cabinet as the results come in by telegraph. It's such a powerful moment because every tap of the machine brings the message closer to realization. Look for part two in the coming weeks. I'll see you next time. And have a great day. Historian, historian, where do you roam? Historian, historian, far, far from home. Have history will travel, he's the card of a man. A professor with knowledge in the heartland. To educate the world. A professor of fortune is a man called Historian Historian